Hey, bless up, King Kevin, the building. Um, you know, want to chop it up with you guys today. Uh, today's probably what August 18th, 19th, uh, 2021. And uh, you guys know me as King Kevin. Definitely a blessing to be here and appreciating life. Um, I'm making my business to appreciate my life, and unfortunately, uh, many of our children are unable to appreciate their life as well. You know, it's come to my attention of the case that's going on with Brother Polite. You know, he's a conscious um, brother. Uh, he practices polygamy, wrote 90 books, has three or four wives, um, quite a few children, makes a considerable amount of money with what he does and stocks and bonds and whatever his, his grind is. I know he does business with uh, Florida, Mayweather, you know, to a degree. I don't know the closeness of their relationship, um, but I do know that he just recently uh, was just found out to have um, possibly, uh, you know, molested or raped a 14-year-old girl. Now, the problem I have with the story is the fact that, um, one, this is an accusation for one. Um, I know years ago he interviewed a victim of Malachi York. His real name is Dwight Malachi York. He had a, a, a compound, or you can call it campus, here in Atlanta, Georgia, of the uh, Nuwabians um, cult. You can call it a cult, what the feds, the feds called it, Nuwabian um, movement. Um, it had several names over the years, uh, you know, Muslim practices, Christian practices. Now it turned into more of a Kemetan thing um, towards the end of his empire. You know, the guy had made millions of dollars, inspired millions of people. Um, but unfortunately, he possibly molested and raped dozens of children for several years. Um, African Bombada, another prominent um, black individual in the, uh, you know, conscious black community, uh, especially in the rap community up there in New York, um, supposedly molested quite a few young boys. I don't know about girls, but definitely boys, including KRS One, uh, KRS One. You know the pr uh, prominent rapper, hip hop. You know rapper from the '90s, late '80s, '90s, still doing his thing. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because Brother Polite has been thrown under the bus with the rest of these animals, these cowards and degenerates, who find it uh, their business to. Uh, molest and rape and violate, you know, our, our precious young young girls someday to be queens. Um, you know, that's what they aspire to be. You know, they, you know our young girls, they want to be uh, someone, you know, just like our young boys. We want to be someone, you know, we want to be great. We want to have a legacy. We want to have a dream to be able to aspire for and go and get. But these men, these monsters, these creeps, these cowards, uh, they steal the shine away from these children. And so the impact of that is, uh, <laughs> lasts, it, it lasts quite a long time. You know, uh, it, some, I was reading this article, it was saying that um, um, all black women, out of all black women, 20% are either raped or molested in their lifetime. You know, um, that, and that's far beyond any in all women, all other cultures. Uh, another another article I was reading, um, this one is APA.org. It was stating that um, most women, uh, particularly black women, wait a year until they press charge, uh, press charge, or even seek any type of counseling. It may take years till they press charges, but they wait a year to actually seek help for something that is truly eating them up and eating them alive. You know, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of men. From my understanding, they don't ever come forward about it. I know brother Kevin Gates, um, he talked about, you know, being violated in prison, <laughs> you know, that, and Kevin Gates is a pretty big guy. So uh, for him not to be able to defend himself in prison um, against the guys who sexually violated him, you know, that, that just shows you what type of monsters, what type of uh, power, uh, physical power, and evidently mental and spiritual power um, these individuals possess over the people they victimize. There's another stat, 35% of black women experience some sort of sexual contact or violence during their lifetime. One in five um, black women are survivors. One in five are survivors 
um, of rape. One in four black girls are sexually abused um, before the age of 18. One in four black girls. 17% um, of black women experience sexual violence other than rape by an intimate partner during their lifetime. Um, you know, black women were two and a half times more likely to be murdered by men um, than white co counterparts, you know. And so, you know, these, these stats uh, for every black woman who re reports a rape, 15 don't. So these stats are, you know, something that I've been, you know, somewhat familiar with over the years. Uh, this is an underlying problem that we have to uh, address in, in our community. Uh, we have, there's no doubt about it, not just addressed, but dealt with, um, with the iron fist, um, if, if, if we have to, you know, because this doesn't only destroy um, our young black girls, but, you know, our, their future as well. You know, if they choose to uh, remain victims um, to these types of crimes, to this, this type of uh, demonic spirits that are in our community. And a lot of it comes from um, black men who get out of prison. They get out of prison and, you know, don't have, still got a bunch of demons filled in them from, from the prison cells and we welcome them home. We want our brothers back home one of our fathers and uncles back home, my grandpa is back home, but they're poor, many of them are poisoning the future of our, the legacy of our names and our bloodline. And we keep thinking that the white man is gonna help us, you know, white man is gonna save us. Old woman gonna be the answer to our problems. They're gonna solve this for us. And to, to be quite frank with you, if you guys don't know by now, we all we got, we have to take care of this, this sexual violence, this demonic spirit that's in our community. And as I stated with a heavy hand, I don't think these guys can be cured. I honestly think if, if a guy's a sexual predator, he will always be a sexual predator. You know, I truly believe they will have to be dealt with, um, annihilated, you know, uh, quite frank, killed. You know, if, an, if, if a dude, if a buster is willing to put his hands on a girl or woman, and this just say he gets caught. Who knows? It could be 10, 20, 30 other women that doesn't even come forward to press the charges. You know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously, it, it, the numbers are that high. Many of, many of these young ladies don't press charges because, one, they knew the individual. There's a family member, possibly. And they're afraid that it's going to break up the family. That's the number one reason. One of the number one reasons is they don't tell. They don't... Um, turn in the, 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 the perpetrator. Now, with Brother Polite, the young lady that um, allegedly was sexually assaulted, story goes that, you know, he called the mom, get this y'all, he called the mom and the mom gave him permission to bring her daughter to a club. The girl's 14 years old. And but the polite see the club was closed. They couldn't go. So he took her to the hotel. Supposedly now, these are all alleged, you know, this is what the article is saying. And Brother Polite is saying in the interview he did with Sarnetta. I've done a couple of interviews with Sarnetta dealing with Haiti, um, you know, over the years. I've done two in the past two years. So Sarnetta's TV show is pretty popular. You know, one of the top conscious platforms online. You can watch a, a video online and be a thousand people watching it live. You know, watch one of my live videos on live on YouTube. You might have, you know, 10 people, you know, um, 20 people. So he was on the, you know, pleading his case. And I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I'm thinking to myself, why are you bringing a 14 year old girl to a hotel anyway? First of all, why are you alone with a 14 year old girl that's not your daughter? Secondly, why are you giving a girl, a girl 14 years old, alcohol in the first place? Number three, why are you alone in the hotel in the room with her? And, you know, for her to even any type of confusion, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because honestly, I hope Brother Polite didn't do that because I have a lot of respect for his work. I don't know him personally. I know he has a lot of haters, uh, you know, as far as online, you see the comments, but the brother is very knowledgeable, just like Brother uh, Malachi, uh, Malachi York was. You know, he was a very knowledgeable brother. So... Don't think that someone is genius doesn't mean they can't do anything wrong or because no one's perfect. But when you have those type of vices, you need to get your head cut off. And if 
I highly doubt that if it was just one girl, if it was just one this one girl who, whether she she called the police or the mom called the police because, you know, she woke up with with Brother Polite trying to make her throw up, and he was trying to get her supposedly make her give him oral sex. So he had he was served the warrant. You know, for D for D, a DNA warrant, which means that he has to turn in his DNA, or you know, turn himself in so he can check for DNA, and and, and possibly there were some swabs taken um, of Brother Polite. You know what I'm saying? You know, to match his DNA with possibly semen or spit. I don't know on this young girl. Was the mother pimping the daughter? You know what I'm saying? You know, you see, you have young girls. You know, I just commented this morning on Facebook with my uh, my niece, you know, because, you know, she had a beautiful picture up, you know, on a bench. You know, she's a senior in high school right now. And I haven't seen her. I've seen her during the summer. You know, she definitely, I mean, I've known Shine since she was a little girl. You know what I'm saying? So I used to babysit Shine, but she used to always cry. So I couldn't stand when my brother asked me to babysit her. But I love, I love all my nieces and nephews. And... Now that she's a, a damn near an adult, she's eight, you know, 17, about to be 17 years old. She's seen in high school. I see that she had a short skirt on, right? I mean, the, sh the skirt to me was pretty short. Now, I know the mama dress, she like the dress pretty provocative because, you know, her mama's a very attractive woman. And to see my niece wearing a skirt so short, I made a comment, yeah, she's beautiful, you know what I mean? But I think that skirt is inappropriate. You feel me? Because women just look at things that all oh, being sexy, being attractive. But you don't understand how many demons you got staring at you down the street or been watching you, waiting for you to slip, waiting to get the opportunity to put a gun to your head or a knife to your throat, dragging the bushes or in the car. You have no idea. And so they don't need no motivation. They don't need inspiration to come and grab you. Our women need to be more conscious of everything, be more intentional in, in, in their actions, not just out in the street. Could be, out, you know, when you're at work or you exercise and even walk into your home. Like there's many things women need to be doing. Women must do to protect themselves, must do to protect their daughters. Posting your daughter with a high skirt or booty shorts with cheeks hanging out, breasts, you know what I'm saying, breasts showing. Just like you teaching them not to leave anything to imagination to a man. You teaching them dressing like a hoochie is okay. And then you got women using their, their children against their fathers. Now, which brings to a, another can of worms that opens up because you, these girls, these young girls, now my niece, you know what I'm saying, little shy, well, I call her shy. She, uh, you know, she has a father figure there. My, not only is her, my brother, her father in her life she got uncles that's in her life and she has a stepfather in her life that's so she has men around her um to protect her but that's a rare case in the black community there's not enough fathers or male role models in the community and there's too many perverts there's too many you know what i'm saying degenerates running around being predators towards our girls so i plead with the mothers out there Stop pimping your daughters for a check. Stop pimping your daughters for attention and like on social media. Stop pimping your daughters for whatever gratification you get out of it. Teach them. And if you don't know how to do it, allow an elder woman, a woman that may have more experience, wisdom, maybe a woman in your circle, in your church or your job to train your daughter in things that you may not be, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> knowledgeable of. You may not know anything regarding, you know, being classy. You know, you may not understand how to read. You know, you may not have little to no education, but that don't make you a bad person. What well, makes you a bad person when you don't make your best effort to teach your, your female, your girl, your princess, future queen to sit at a table, to know how to eat, to know how to present themselves, to know how to speak proper English to, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be an English major, but at least, you know, some sort of class and taste to it. Show them how to, you know, allow a man to open the door for you. You know what I'm saying? To be able to distinguish between, you know, a gentleman 
and just a, a male with a penis. There's a lot of things that could be taught and learned, but we choose to focus our energy on other things and not in the protection of our young girls. And so when I seen this situation with uh, Brother Polite, I was really, I was like, man, so many people throwing him under the bus off top, you know what I'm saying? But I'm watching his video and I'm gonna say this, you know, I'm not saying that he's innocent or guilty because I don't know, but I, but I do know that if he if he is guilty, he's gonna get dealt with in the prison system because guys don't play that when it comes to their, you know what I'm saying, to their girls. Cause a lot of guys in prison, they got daughters, you know what I mean? And they gonna deal with you. Now, I'm not an advocate for rapists or child molesters, to be honest with you. If you know, if they could all be lined up and shot and killed, I'll be cool with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause there's no uh rehabilitation for them. Only death or permanent incarceration. That's the fate that they deserve and need because that's a sickness that that <laughs> there is no treatment. It's, it's, it's untreatable. They're gonna continue doing what they're doing until they get caught or killed by, by a concerned father or a real man in the neighborhood is gonna be like, we need to eliminate this buster from our community. We got too many of these, part of my French, we got too many of these fuck niggas in our community. We have too many of them and we've been, and we just sweep under the rug. You know, matter of fact, when I was, you know, I used to play football and, and, and well, I ran track too. Ran track, played football, middle school, high school, um, and begin very beginning of my college career. Until I started making bad choices and then I just, you know, ended up having to fight my way back into college and I graduated by the grace of God, you know. But in the, in the locker room, a lot of guys, they make jokes about how rough or how um, how they violate women. Some of them would, would straight up, you know, in so many words, would brag about raping their girlfriend or some chick they had at the house. And, and the niggas around them would laugh about it. They literally would laugh about it. And I never found that shit funny, you know what I'm saying? And and I tell them, bro, I don't think that's funny. See, I was never a type of dude that was in a in a clique per se. I always, you know, did my own thing. There's no no wonder why I got tattooed on my back says one man army. So I, I I wasn't really ever trying to be in no clique. I don't because I always felt highly of myself. I mean, I always considered myself a king, but I was, you know, my mom raised me and my siblings to very think very highly of yourself. It's not about how much money you have. Class has nothing to do with that. It's not about your money, it's, it's how you carry yourself and your morals and dignity. And I may not known how to verbalize my disappointment or, you know what I'm saying, or just disagreement with these dudes laughing about some girl they violated. And come to find out, some of them guys were actually, you know what I'm saying, serial rapists in my high school at Deerfield Beach High, South Florida. And... I could go into a case that, you know, uh, I experienced, but you have to read my first book about that courage to believe, because that's not the, the reason why I'm making this story. But our young boys are groomed in the culture of rape. You know, a lot of, a lot of people don't understand that the rape and molestation goes back in history, a very long time in, in American history, from the plantations, not just American, but in the Caribbean as well, but in the plantation where a lot of guys were violated by the slave owner to um you know to 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 bring them to belittle them to a level so low that the black woman would see that they that the black man can't save them a black man cannot protect them cannot provide for them like the white man could that's why so many black women are against men right now you know what i'm saying they don't know it though it's going on as business as usual but what they're saying and doing a lot of times undermine black men I'm in Atlanta right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Black women are very prominent in Atlanta. Some of them are very helpful with black men, but a lot of them are, are so proud of their success that they would rub it in the face of, not just, of course, for other women, but specifically black men. Let them know, I don't need you. But then again, when they find themselves lonely and needing some attention, they, you know, blowing up our phones and texts and social media and all of that. They only need a man for one thing, his penis. That's it. As far as that's what they're thinking. This is this is what the Willie Lynch syndrome has been doing and will continue to do. So I definitely, you know, plead with, with my women, my black queens out there, please do your best to be, um, to pay more attention. Be more intentional 
with what you're doing regarding your, your, your daughters and your sons. Because some of these boys don't know no means no. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that because they on the corner with Joe Blow who's who's telling them it's cool to violate a woman, to, to stick your hand under her dress, in her drawers, grab her titties, grab her ass. They're being taught that shit is cool. They're being taught, they're being taught that it's cool and it's not cool. You know what I'm saying? None of that is cool. Anyway, I'm King Kevin Dover, man. I'm going to leave it at that. You know, I definitely hope justice is served when it comes to Brother Polite. Um, bro brother Malachi York, uh, Malachi York is serving 135 years in prison right now for what he did to those children in Georgia and New York. Hopefully, African bomb Bombarda gets um, gets justice as well for what what he supposedly have done for for decades in the hip hop industry to young black boys. Because a lot of rap music is really black boys expressing their frustration of having a lack of father. Or for being violated. That's what the rap culture is. So I definitely hope that things change for the better for our people. That we become more conscious, more intentional. And do things more purposeful. You know, provide and protect our children. They deserve an opportunity for a better tomorrow. We might, we may have given up on ourselves as adults. And yet you see the world going crazy. But our children deserves an opportunity. Our children deserve an opportunity to be the best that they can be. To let their light shine. See, see how this light right here is shining? They need opportunities to, to allow their light to shine as bright as possible. And that's real. Anyway, I'm King Kevin. Y'all have a blessed one. TJF.